Okay, section uh, 4.3. Again, we're, we're working with the um, Riemann sums, uh, but now we're heading into the AND um, definite integrals. And so, um, if we have a le uh, Riemann sum, then our, our definite integral is um, uh, just the limit of a Riemann sum uh, over that partition. And, and so, our definite integral is the limit as the partition goes to zero, okay, or another way to look at that is n is going to infinity, um, then we're taking the sum of uh, i equal 1 to n of f at some ci in there uh, times our delta xi. So, if that limit exists and, and so forth, um, then uh, we shorten this notation a bit to write, now that looks like our integral sign, right? And we have our f of x and dx, and then uh, we say from a to b, okay, and of course that was where we had uh, x0 was a and xn is always b, no matter what n is. Um, and that is our notation for a definite integral. Now, when you again, the, the real punchline to all this is in section 4.4, but um, as you uh, look at this, you can see kind of where some of this notation maybe came from, right? So, we have the f of x, which of course is very important because that's what I'm working on. Um, but then we had a delta x and, oh, so we leave this dx there. And, um, and then of course we were summing from 1 to n, but we knew in a context that, well, that meant from a to b. And, and so we're, we've got our a to b there telling us similar information to, uh, uh, our summation sign here, and then again, this was a sum. Well, that looks right. That looks a lot like an S, like a sum, and and so that notation kind of reflects what's happening uh, back here in the definition with this limit of a summation or the Riemann sum, and and so you know that's our notation for a definite integral. Um, and then, so, um, you can, uh, theorem 4.5, uh, relates, uh, area and definite integrals, okay, relates area and definite integrals. Okay, now, but this is where, you know, you need to be careful is a definite integral is not defined as an area, okay? A definite integral is this stuff up here. It's the limit of a Riemann sum. So it, it doesn't have to correspond to area at all, but that is a great interpretation. And, and so, if you, and also then in an applied sort of way, if you want to find the area of uh, a certain uh, bounded region, then, um, uh, then you, can, you can do it with this thing called a definite integral. So, in Theorem 5, it mentions that, okay, f is continuous. And f is non-negative, so f 
is greater than or equal to zero um, on a closed interval AB. So it's continuous and greater than or equal to zero on AB. Okay, then the area of the region, then the area um, bounded by, okay, we've got um, the x-axis. We have the line, the vertical line, y, uh, x equals a, the vertical line, x equals b, and um, the curve, f of x, then the area bounded by that is area equals that definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So there you go, it's the limit of that Riemann sum. We kind of already knew that, but now here's a nice theorem um, using the definite integral uh, notation. Okay, so we'll stop this one here.